bad names are a cause of bugs. People think they understand the code, but they don't, and the faulty assumptions lead to errors. It can be difficult to name a function if it does more than one thing, so it would be better to split it apart and have the logic divided according to each responsibility. But sometimes you come across code where the logic is all tangled together. Today, we're going to look at how to tidy up that kind of code and divide it up safely. Hi, I'm Emily Bache. I'm a software developer, creator of Saman Coaching. Welcome to my channel. This video is sponsored by Tuple, who make an app for remote pair and ensemble programming for both Mac OS and Windows. And I'd like to show you just how smooth it is. So I'm gonna call up my friend, Jack, to help me with this bit of code. Hi, Jack. So I can just share my screen with one click and then he can look at the code and help me out. Yeah, I spotted something he wants to change there. And Jack can just dive right in and start editing in my machine on my code. And we can collaborate really well. So uh, do check it out. Go to their website, there's a link in the show notes. Today's demo is the theatrical players refactoring Carter, specifically the first part where we're just separating different kinds of logic into different functions. I'm gonna demonstrate split variable and split loop amongst other things. Now, of course, you may not be using the same programming language or tools as me. So what's important to watch out for is the way I'm doing the refactoring safely in small steps, which is the same approach that Martin Fowler takes in his book, Refactoring, which is where the example is from. Let's go and dive into the code. This is the code we're working on today, and we've got some tests that are all passing. So we're in a good position to begin refactoring. We're working in this print method and specifically on this result variable, which is currently being appended to, to format a plain text statement. And the new feature we have is HTML st statements. But if we uh, look at where this result is being appended to, it's kind of a bit all over the place. We've got um, a shotgun surgery situation. And rather than just kind of trying to change it to, to HTML in all of these places, or, or even worse, putting in an if statement to decide if to whether to do the new behavior or the old, that would just make the code worse. We want to try and gather together all of this code into one place where it will be cohesive and we can change it without disturbing the rest of the code. Now, this is looking all very well, but that particular assignment there is inside a loop. And we would like to not have that kind of uh, formatting logic in the same loop as all of this calculation logic. We need to do a split loop refactoring. And that's a refactoring I perhaps don't do so often. So I like to, to just check out what are the instructions. I've got some notes here on the Salmon Coaching website where I've written down basically uh, the steps of this refactoring to remind me. Um, so let's just go through this. Um, examine. Now, a loop is a code smell, but even more when it does one thing, which implies divergent change. Yes, that's exactly what we've got here. So the preparation is to identify the loop we want to split, and in particular, which lines within it hang together and need to be separated. You may need to do some additional refactorings, um, and it says what some of those could be. Now, I'm not sure what preparation I need at the moment, so I'm just going to go on to the implement step and then hopefully it will become clear when I do that. So the implementation step is, is you know, check your tests are passing, select the whole loop, duplicate it, and in one copy, delete everything except the lines you want to split out, and in the other copy, delete only the lines you want to split. And when you've done that, hopefully everything is, is passing, and then there's some additional steps perhaps to, to clean up and follow up, but we'll, we'll come to that in a minute. So let's just go back to the code. So the first step was to duplicate the entire loop. So I'll just select that and duplicate it um, just below. And let's see, there we are, duplicate it. And now I can remove all the lines here that are to do with calculation logic. Oh, that was all of those. Um, it's gonna be all of those and that line as well. So all I've got left here is that formatting logic, but Immediately I see, well, actually I couldn't do that. Um, it's helpfully highlighted in red. There were two local variables that my um, this code is using that are no longer being calculated in this loop. So we've got the play and this amount. So that's the preparation steps I need to do. I need to sort out access to these uh, local variables in my uh, second copy of the loop before I'll be able to do it. 
So I'm going to back out that change. I've uh, learned something from it, but I'm just going to roll back those changes and get back to uh, passing tests. So uh, now I'm ready to uh, do the preparation steps. Play, that local variable there, where is it coming from? If I put the cursor on it, I can see where it's declared and where it's used. Okay, so it comes here, the first line of the for loop. We're looking it up from the, the plays map. Um, and that implies to me that I could just, instead of having a local variable for this, I could just look it up whenever I need it. So I'm going to inline that variable. Very simple way to deal with that. I'm looking it up now in all the places I was using it. And run the tests, make a commit. Now I've got a little plugin that will just pre-populate the commit message if I've done any automated refactorings, which is what this was. Just makes it really fast to make that commit. So I think I've dealt with that local variable. Now, the line got longer though, so I'm just going to reformat the code a bit so I can see what's going on. So this is the, the line of code I want to have in its own loop. And the other local variable that I um, wanted to worry about was this amount. Yeah, so just putting the cursor on that, I can see where it's used. Um, it's used in a couple of places there and a couple, loads of places up here. Although actually all of this usage is, is actually assigning to this amount. So that piece of code there forms quite a nice code paragraph. And I think I'd like to extract that as a method. So uh, my tool will do that for me. Get this amount. It's really amount for, it's the amount for these plays and that performance. So I'll rename that. Um, and then let's just take a look at the code that it's extracted. Uh, yeah, that, that hangs together. This amount probably just needs renaming to results because now that's the result of this function. Cool. So just run the tests, and make a commit. Yep. And it's those are all automated refactoring. So the message is, is correct. Great. So I've got a, a new little uh, method there. Now, the problem I actually had was with the this amount local variable. And I can see that I'm using that in two places now. Uh, but this calculation is actually pretty lightweight and the simplest way to deal with this local variable is just to inline it. Um, if this was a heavyweight calculation with lots of IO or something, then that would uh, be a less good choice. But the simplest thing is just to inline this now and do it twice effectively. So I'll um, do it here when I need it for the formatting. Um, and if I inline there, I can tell it, yeah, inline the other one as well so that we're just calculating it every time we need it. That a, is a perfectly valid refactoring. I'll, I'll check that in with a commit. But um, I might need to revisit that de decision if I discover later through profiling that that was heavier weight than I thought. But now I've dealt with both of those local variables, I can go back to my original goal, which was to do the split loop. So just check the instructions again. Um, I don't do this very often, so I wanted to just remind myself. Select the whole loop, duplicate it, in more copy, delete everything except the lines you want to split. In the other copy, delete only the lines you want to split. Test should be passing again. Okay, so select the loop, duplicate it, um, delete the lines we don't want from this copy. That's those ones. And now I didn't have anything marked in red, so that's looking hopeful. And then in the other copy, I delete that line, which is the formatting code. So now I've got two copies of the loop doing different things. And my tests are passing. So I was doing a successful split loop there. So I'll celebrate with a commit. Uh, this wasn't an automated refactoring, so I need to write a message. Okay, so I'm doing pretty well now. Um, if I look again at the uh, result um, variable and where it's being assigned to, I think the next thing here is a slide statement. I just want to move that initialization closer to all the other places I'm using it. So I'm just going to move that statement down here. Um, yeah, that's good. I've gathered together all the code to do with the result now. And my tests are still passing. So let's just commit that slide statement refactoring. And see, now it looks to me like this is a code paragraph that I could extract to get all the code to do with formatting the statement. So let's try and do that. And yeah, it's suggesting to me uh, I could have this uh, new function with five arguments. Oh, five arguments is quite a lot. 
um, maybe it needs them all. But I've just spotted actually that the number format there, um, that's not needed in the rest of the code. So I should, um, I'm just going to back out that extract method. I should move that um, declaration of that formatter down here as well, closer to where it's used, and then include it in this code too. Test still running, um, commit that slide statement refactoring, and then try that extract method again. So this is all the code for formatting the, the statement. Extract that. Um, so four variables, still quite a lot, but I think it's okay for the moment. So statement for all of these, this data. Seems like a reasonable method name. There you go. I'd like to take this opportunity to just thank all my supporters on Patreon who helped me to carry on making these kinds of videos. There are a lot of perks of being a member, if you didn't know. You get session previews and additional materials. Do take a look on patreon.com. The next time you're breaking apart some tangled logic, I hope you'll remember to use small, safe steps. Look for places where you can apply the refactoring split variable or split loop and simplify things. Happy coding.